Hello people of God, this is Prophetess Miss Deja Vu. Welcome back to my channel. Subscribe if you haven't. Like, comment, share. And of course, people of God, I would love to hear your testimonies as well. Um, special shout out to those of you who have been supporting my channel, liking, commenting, sharing. Mm, you know, all that good stuff. Um, may the Lord bless every last one of you guys for that. Oh my God. Um, today we're going to be um, starting out of the book of Kings. And before we get started, I would love us to pray over this word, people of God. Dear Heavenly Father, we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. We glorify your holy name. There is nothing that is impossible for you to do, Father God. What is too hard for you to do? Is there anything that you can't do? Glory to God. Father God, we give all of our worries, our pains. We give it to you. We lay it at your feet. Father God, give us your rest, your peace. Hallelujah. Meet every need, Father God. Have your way in this place. Let your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. Glory to God. We bless your holy name because it is already done. It is already finished. Hallelujah. Glory to God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Um, okay. We're going to be starting... From 1st King 21, chapter 21. Glory to God. Have your way in this place, Lord. Okay, it says, Sometime later, there was an incident involving a vineyard belonging to Nabat the Jezreelite. The vineyard was in Jezreel, close to the palace of Ahab, king of Samaria. Ahab said to Nabat, let me have your vineyard to use for a vegetable garden, since it is close to my palace. In exchange, I'll give you a better vineyard, or if you prefer, I will pay you whatever it is worth. But Nabat replied, The Lord forbid that I should give you the inheritance of my ancestors. So Nabat went home, sullen and angry, because Nabat the Jezreelite had said, I will not give you the inheritance of my ancestors. He lay on his bed, sulking and refused to eat. Um, people of God, I'm hearing something about um, a legal matter about an inheritance. Something about an inheritance. Let's continue. It says, his wife Jezebel came in and asked him, Why are you sullen? Why won't you eat? He answered her, Because I said to Nabat the Jezreelite, Sell me your vineyard, and if you prefer, I will give you another vineyard in its place. But he said, I will not give you my vineyard. Jezebel, his wife, said, Is this how you act as king over Israel? Get up, eat, cheer up. I'll get you the vineyard of Nabat the Jezreelite. So she wrote letters in Ahab's name, placed his seal on them, and sent them to the elders and nobles who lived in the Ba city with him. In those letters she wrote, Proclaim a day of fasting, and seat Nabat in a prominent place among the people, but seat two scoundrels opposite him, and have them bring charges that he has cursed both God and the king, then take him out to be stoned take him out and stone him to death. I'm hearing it's a setup. Someone was set up. Jesus. Okay, let's continue. So the elders and the nobles who lived in the Bat city did as Jezebel directed in the letters, and she writ the letters she had written to them. They proclaimed a fast, seated the Bat in a prominent place among the people. Then two scoundrels came and sat opposite him and brought charges against Nabat before 
the people, saying, Nabat has cursed both God and the king. So they took him outside the city and stoned him to death, Jesus. Then they sent word to Jezebel, Nabat has, Nabat has been stoned to death. As soon as Jezebel heard that Nabat had been stoned to death, she said to Ahab, Get up and take possession of the vineyard of Nabat, the Jezreelite, that he refused to sell you. He is no longer alive, but dead. He is no longer alive, but dead. When Ahab heard that Nabat was dead, he got up and went down to take possession of Nabat's vineyard. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite, glory to God. Go down to meet Ahab, king of Israel, who rules in Samaria. He is now in Nabat's vineyard, where he has gone to take possession of it. Say to him, this is what the Lord says. Have you not murdered a man and seized his property? Then say to him, this is what the Lord says. In the place where dogs lick up Nabat's blood, dogs will lick up your blood. Yes, your blood. Ahab said to Elijah, so you have found me, my enemy. I have found you, he answered, because you have sold yourself to do evil in the eyes of the Lord. He says, I'm going to bring disaster on you. I will wipe out your descendants and cut off from Ahab every last male in Israel, slave or free. I will make your house like that of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, and that of Baasha, son of Ajah. Because you have aroused my anger and have cursed Israel to sin. So, um, Jeroboam and, um, Basha, um, these people, these people had caused Israel to sin and they started like worshiping idols and other gods and, you know, God had caused great disaster amongst them and their people. So that's what the Lord is saying here. Um, and Jezebel, she was. She also caused Ahab to change the worship of God, the custom of how God liked to be worshipped, and she also brought in other gods as well. She was, um, she was against God. That's who Jezebel is. So, um, it, so yeah, so it goes on to say, and also concerning Jezebel, the Lord says, Dogs will devour Jezebel by the wall of Jezreel. Dogs will eat those belonging to Ahab who died in the city, and the birds will feed on those who died in the country. There was never anyone like Ahab who sold himself to do evil in the eyes of the Lord, urged on by Jezebel his wife. If there's anybody you have on your team or by your side in your ear, um, pushing you to do evil, pushing you to, to do bad, people of God, that person is not for you. That person does not have your best interest at heart. But let's continue. He behaved in the valid manner by going after idols like the Amorite the Lord drove out before Israel. When Ahab heard these words, he tore his clothes, put on sackcloth, and fasted, laid in sackcloth, and went around meekly. Then the, then the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite. Have you noticed how Ahab have humbled himself before me? Because he has humbled himself, I will not bring this disaster in his day, but I will bring it on his house in the days of his son. Jesus. Um, people of God, um, someone, someone lost everything and it seems like you was drowning. And no one reached out a hand to help you. Um, but I see there's an inheritance coming to you. Um, there's an inheritance that belongs to you, and the Lord said is it, it, it is a gift. 
I see others coming against you for this inheritance. I see false accusations, um, false charges um, being placed against you because of this inheritance that's, that's coming to you. Um, people of God, the enemy thought that this, that this blow, that this hit that you just took, this loss that you just took, would have surely taken you out. But you survived. You did not die. You survived. You did not die. Glory to God. Glory to God. Um, on their way to kill you, they encountered God. Jesus. Um, let's jump over to Acts 9, people of God. Jump over to Acts 9. Help me, Holy Spirit. Um, um, chapter 9. Meanwhile, Saul was still breeding out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. People of God, there was religious people involved. I see that there was religious people against you as well, people of God. Let's continue. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus so that if he found anyone there who belonged to the Christ, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you prosecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked, glory to God, I am Jesus who you are prosecuting, he replied, now get up and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. The men traveling with Saul stood there speechless, they heard the sound but did not see anyone. Saul got up from the ground but when he opened his eyes he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand to Damascus. For three days he was blind and did not eat or drink anything. Glory to God. Glory to God. Um, People of God, I see someone that was influenced by a wicked, wicked, evil woman. A very evil spirit, people of God. I see that this person sold their self for evil. And the Lord is calling you to repent. The reckless love of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Um, people of God, don't be surprised if the Lord calls you to remove the scales off of your enemy's eyes. Though they cause you harm, though they 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 um brought false accusation false charges against you though they try to kill you just obey people of God um people of God we may not understand it but it's for the the will and purpose of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who died on the cross for us people of God people of God the Bible goes on to say that Saul's eyes was open and he did many great works for the kingdom of God, people of God. So um, just obey people of God. I'm also hearing that there was karmic debt that needed to be paid, people of God. Hallelujah, glory to God. People of God, let's jump over to John 9.30. John 9.30. And it says, the man answered, now... That is remarkable. You don't know where he comes from, yet he opens my eyes. We know that God doesn't listen to sinners. He listens to the godly person who does his will. Nobody has ever heard of the opening of the eye of a man born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. Glory to God. Um, people of God. Who the sun sets free is free indeed, people of God. Now go in peace and show the world what the Lord has done for you, people of God. Hallelujah, glory to God. Um, I pray that this blesses you, people of God. And I will see you guys in the next video. Take care and shalom.